What's up, everybody? Pastor Matt here, just checking in with you. And thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel this morning. Wanted to comment just a little bit about the Erdman's Twitter meltdown that just happened last night. Apparently, I missed their original tweet where Erdman's kind of came out in support of Pride Month, but uh, apparently there was quite a kerfuffle that happened on their Twitter string. And so Erdman's took down their original post and then they instead replaced it with a long thread uh, in which they accuse their accuser. So let's go ahead and just take a little bit of a look here at this thread and see what we can discern from it. So Erdman starts off here uh, last night, about, um, about five o'clock PM my time, as far as what I can discern here. So that's quitting time in most offices, but uh, Erdman's tweets out, regardless of your doctrinal and ethical convictions, Pride Month is a good time for listening to LGBTQ plus voices. Here are some books to help you to do that. And if you click on the link, it takes you over here to their Erdman's blog. And here is a full endorsement of Pride Month uh, equipped with red, uh, red flag banner here and a list of all of their uh, LGBTQ plus affirming books that they apparently um, offer as a publishing company. Now, as you can imagine, if you're a Christian publisher, um, this is kind of a stick in the eye to your entire customer base, because most of Erdman's customer base is going to be Christians, Christians that are concerned with theology, Christians that are concerned with biblical studies. In fact, behind me over here, I have all of my commentaries on that far back shelf. There are dozens of commentaries published by Erdman's, a number of excellent commentary series, uh, many of which are from a conservative, Christian, historical, biblical, orthodox posi position. In fact, that's what Erdman's is really known for, is a good biblical, theological, commentary-type content. And yet, nevertheless, when Christian companies do something like this, they shouldn't be too terribly surprised when there's some kind of a backlash on Twitter or social media. In fact, that's exactly what happened. So they say here, this weekend, we took down our post because the overwhelming vitriol was alarming and we wanted to protect our authors. We stand by our erd word post. So we have tweeted the link again, but we think we should offer some explanation. Notice here in this um, thread that what Erdman's is going to do is they're going to flip the script, so to speak, and they're going to cast themselves as the victim here. Now, whether or not it was entirely foolish to suggest to their broadly conservative Christian um, purchasing base <laughs> something that is diametrically opposed to what most of their own patrons believe, whether that was wise, um, I'll leave that for you to decide. But here in this string, they're going to become entirely self-defensive, and they're going to accuse those who um, who complained, who dissented, who voiced their concerns in their Twitter feed, they're going to accuse them of being those who are purveying vitriol. And they say here that they want to protect our authors. Now, uh, full disclosure here, I am an author myself, and I am a contributor to this volume here. It's an excellent volume, the Jonathan Edwards Encyclopedia, uh, which is edited by Harry S. Stout and Kenneth Minkema and Adrian Nile, forward by George M. Marsden. I'm one of the contributors to this. I'm not the main author. This is a multi-author work. I do have four essays in this particular volume as a Jonathan Edwards scholar. Uh, so I guess in some broad sense, I am an Erdman's author. And I will, tell, I will tell you this, I do not need this kind of uh, protection. Because if anything, for Erdman's to endorse Pride Month so blatantly and as baldly as they're about to do here in this text string, that is a that is a, a, a chink in my armor that is um, that that works actively against my reputation as a conservative Christian author. So I find myself uh, somewhat flustered and, and rather infuriated by what Erdman's is about to do here in this string. I don't know who typed out this string, but I definitely question the wisdom of some of the things that they're about to say here. So notice in this, this thread, they're immediately going to try the old flip the script motif and cast themselves as the victim. They say some of the replies to our original tweet could be summarized as, with this tweet, you've gone over to the dark side. Your company is now useless and we hope you go bankrupt and your employees become jobless. Well, 
listen, I have no doubt that people said some mean things on social media. That's what social media is. <laughs> if any company wants to use social media, um, yes, there's obviously a benefit to that as you can promote your products and you can send links over to your website and you can direct link things to Amazon so people can buy your stuff. All of that is good as far as the publisher or the author is concerned and authors do appreciate that kind of support. Um, but social media, as we all know, is the wild, wild west. And there are going to be people that are going to say all kinds of things. And I have a feeling here that this line, hope you go bankrupt, is their uh, encapsulation of the uh, get woke, go broke comment, which undoubtedly surfaced a number of a number of times throughout this text string or the one preceding it. So they say, for those um, who thought that cursing and reviling would be an appropriate Christian response to an invitation to try to understand the LGBTQ plus Christians, we offer no response. Their self-revelation speaks for itself and is grievous to us. Now, this word here, reviling, you're going to see this throughout the tweet string here, and I find this to be a very interesting choice of words because Erdman's is going to accuse people from the historic biblical Christian uh, conservative position as being revilers because they disapprove of an Erdman's endorsement of a Pride Month. Now, I find that to be a very interesting choice of words, um, given that when we look up the word reviling here in the New Testament, it often comes right next to references to sexual immorality. So for instance, in 1 Corinthians 5, it says, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and the swindlers or idolaters, since then you would have to go out of the world. But I'm writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater or a reviler here. Okay, so uh, interesting that Erdman's apparently has a, a deep problem with reviling but they do not, as we're going to see, have a problem with sexual immorality. And so again, also in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, same letter here, we look up, look up the context here, we find uh, the language of man, men who practice homosexuality uh, right above the language of reviling here. So Erdman's here in this tweet string has a deep, deep, deep problem with revilers, who they would consider anybody who disapproves of their post, apparently, um, but they don't seem to have a practice, a problem with the sexual immorality and the practice thereof that their dissenters are complaining about. All right, so let's go back to the tweet string and see, uh, see what See what they have to say. For our conservative Christian readers and friends who may be disturbed by the slander of the revilers, we want to explain the misunderstandings they voiced. It's all just a misunderstanding, you see. The revilers, there's that word again, say that we have changed our position and begun to teach heresy. There are several problems with that accusation. Well, actually, uh, false teaching is heresy. And if you were going to deny that sexual immorality is a sin, then that would be by definition, by definition, false teaching. Okay, so we go on. Um, we do not think it is for us as a publisher to define doctrine for the church. We are not the Pope, nor an ecumenical counselor, council, nor even a pastor. Our role is to publish books representing both settled and experimental positions. That's an interesting phrase, isn't it? that serve the church in its ongoing deliberations. Now, everything said here, I find to be curious. So basically what they're, they're saying is, as a publisher, we, we completely throw our hands back and um, we find no reason to make any judgments whatsoever as to doctrine and more immorality or morality. In fact, they're gonna do that very thing here in this, in this thread. Um, we are not the Pope. Okay, well, did anybody accuse you of being the Pope? I don't think so. Is the Pope the only one who makes moral renderings or judgments? No. Ecumenical councils, even pastors, and nobody is accusing that of, of being necessarily your role. And yet certainly as one who is a publisher, uh, you have about as much information as possibly anybody in the world could have when it comes to issues of discernment and interpreting the scriptures correctly here. So if you're saying you have no responsibility to provide faithful interpretation of the Bible and theology to your readers, I, I would simply challenge that notion. I think every single Christian has 
the, um, the responsibility and should have the wherewithal to try to make moral interpretations of what is very clearly presented to us in scripture. So on one hand, they seem to be um, pleading ignorance here. Like how, who are we to even know? How, how could we even discern? We're, we're not the Pope. How would we know what's right and wrong? Well, uh, you have about as much access to deep Christian thinking as anyone else as a, as a publisher. Um, and notice here that they said that they're going to represent both sides here of settled, right? Yeah, because it's the orthodox historic Christian position and experimental positions. Interesting that they, they use the language of experimental positions. Is that what we're calling sin these days? I suppose, I guess that's a new term for me. Um, we therefore routinely publish books that contradict each other on many contested doctrinal points. Now, now there, that's probably true because as many books as they've published over the years, I certainly have no doubt that there are a number of them that contradict themselves. They probably have some books that are, for instance, written by Calvinists and others that are uh, written by Arminians. In fact, they even mention here Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant books. Okay, all of that is fine. We are not confused. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to challenge that notion here. We are a publisher that serves the ecumenical church. Okay, so you have a, the broadest audience possible. That's that's fine. With regard to Christian understandings of LGBTQ plus people, Erdman's has been publishing books for quite a few years by authors who have come to an affirming conclusion on biblical and theological grounds. This is not new for us. Okay, so they say here that they've been doing this for a while. At the same time, Erdman's has continued and will continue to publish books by and for people who have not come to this conclusion. Now, again, here, I find this to be very interesting language here because in the previous tweet, they just, uh, they just labeled one side as the affirming conclusion. So apparently those are people who are compassionate, people who are patient, people who are loving, people who are understanding, all these kinds of things. But then rather um, than define the other side, the conservative side, the tr traditional side as being uh, the biblical side, or any other possible commendation in terms of language, they simply lump all those into the category of those who have not come to this conclusion. In other words, there is an enlightened position here, according to Erdman's. It is the affirming position, and anyone who has yet to make it that far has simply not yet come to this conclusion. This is, this is nothing other than the you're on the wrong side of history argument that we see put forward from time to time. Now, this is probably the most problematic tweet, in my opinion. It says here, Erdman's does not publish books that deny the existence or ignore the voices of LGBTQ people, propagate false teaching about discredited or harmful therapies, or in general, condemn, revile LGBTQ people. Too much of that has been done over time, and we want no part in continuing in it. Okay, question for you. Who denies the existence of LGBTQ plus people? Is there anybody out there who says this is not a thing? Is there anybody out there who denies that uh, gay people exist or that homosexuality is a real thing or that there are such a thing as lesbians or gay people or transgender people? I'm not, I'm not sure who exactly denies the existence of these people, but this would certainly bear all the marks of a classic straw man argument here, unless perhaps what they have here in mind is those of us who would say that uh, the transgender ideology um, doesn't seem to comport with actual reality. In other words, if a man um, claims that he is now a woman based on uh, the foundational argument of, of his own whimsical um, mental presuppositions, then yes, we might have reason to deny that that actually comports with real reality, okay? So this, this is actually the very crux of the transgender argument, isn't it? Because some of us are saying that, that sex and gender are biologically determined and others are saying, no, it is actually a social construct and it's determined by one's imagination. Okay, so if that's what you mean by deny the existence, um, then I, I, think I'm, I think I'm getting what you're saying here, Erdmans. But notice here um, that they also say this, that 
they propagate false teaching about discredited and harmful therapies. Now here we're probably talking about the possibility of actual change, right? That a person could conceivably repent of their sins, experience sanctification, and to the glory of God, actually make progress in Christ-likeness. Now let's go back to this um, to this verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, which we looked at earlier. Paul says here, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Notice how Paul uses the past tense here. But what happened? Why is it past tense? Because, he says, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So, in this very same text that they appear to keep quoting by the use of the term revilers, not only do we see the term homosexuality specifically referenced here, but Paul also holds out the hope of sanctification. Such were some of you. But what happened? You were washed you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Christ, okay? So Erdman's appears to be denying then the validity of transformation by way of sanctification here, okay? And they say that they want no part in those who would continue to uphold that true change then is actually possible. Um, interesting that they put therapies here in quotation marks. I guess that's the term du jour of the day. That's some of the laws that we're seeing in Canada, for instance, about conversion therapies. Uh, nobody wants to use the word preaching or doctrine or teaching or dogma or something like that here because they know that that'd be really treacherous grounds to step into that area. Then they say, we reject the tendency to promote division and discord by categorizing Christians into two camps, considering us to be right about everything and them to be wrong. Well, it seems to me that Erdman's has done that very thing here by, uh, on one hand, associating the us with the affirming position and the them being those who they say are def uh, revilers of LGBTQ plus people by holding on to, well, orthodox, biblical, historic Christianity. We decline to swear loyalty to one faction's us and join their hostilities against the corresponding thems. Well, I would suggest that perhaps calling uh, your ideological opponents revilers might actually be doing that very same thing, categorizing of other Christians. So, and here's the concluding tweet here. We reiterate our invitation, especially to our conservative friends whom we value and respect. We value and respect you conservatives to use Pride Month to read a book by LGBTQ plus people, Christians, and their allies. Well, interesting here that one thing is omitted, though Erdman's um, throughout this, this tweet thread tries to have their cake and eat it too. They try to have it both ways. I wonder if they would be so bold as to post a list of those books, which they claim to also support, um, that, that, that clearly enunciate the conservative biblical orthodox position. Would you be so bold as to do that in Pride Month, Erdman? So I, I lay that down as a friendly challenge to you. And here ends the, the tweet string um, with this last one here. As always, our aim is not to tell you what to think. It is to provide books that we believe will promote informed and charitable thinking. Okay, well, again, I say that to you, Erdmans. If you are as charitable as uh, you say you are, then post a list of books to the countervailing position, the reviling position, as you call it, the non-affirming position. Love to see you do that. All right, well, it's only so sad that another Christian publisher has gone this route um, because this really does seem to be sticking the stick in the eye, poking the eye of its own clientele. I have a sneaking suspicion that this entire thread is gonna disappear, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to get, up, get it up on this uh, video here, just to mark this for posterity. All right, thanks for checking in. Uh, thanks for watching. Love you lots. Talk to you later.